Evanescence just released their fifth studio album, The Bitter Truth, in March 2021. They are a band that is known for taking a pretty long hiatus once an album is released. Of course, they will tour in support of the album, but it'll be some time before you get to hear new music. But when Evanescence hit worldwide fame in the early 2000s, life didn't exactly get better for the band from Little Rock, Arkansas. In fact, things got precipitously worse. After a couple of EPs and one LP length demo, Evanescence got a deal with Wind Up Records in January 2001 and then released their debut album, Fallen, in March 2003. Bring Me To Life was the lead single and as you're probably aware, it was a monster hit. Amy Lee was initially against having male vocals on the song but relented after it was a better option than having a permanent male vocalist in the group. The song was also on the Daredevil soundtrack, which was published by Wind Up Records, who released it as a single again. And to be honest, can you release a single on one album and then re-release the single a month later on another album? Apparently yes. But with that double dose of publicity, the song was a smash, racking up a bunch of award nominations and ultimately winning a Grammy for Best Hard Rock Performance and getting Evanescence the award for Best New Artist. Amy Lee attributed the worldwide success of the song to it being on the Daredevil soundtrack. She said, We had fans in countries we had never been to because they had the soundtrack and they heard it on the radio. So it started blowing up all over the world and then we had a reason to tour all over the world. Lee spoke to VH1 about the song, saying it was about open-mindedness. Quote, It's about waking up to all the things you've been missing for so long. One day, someone said something that made my heart race for a second, and I realized that for months, I'd been numb, just going through the motions of life. When you read the lyrics or listen to the song, it is very clear right from the start that this comment blew the doors right off. The pain that she had been hiding was totally unlocked, particularly from herself. How can you see into my eyes like open doors? Amy had woken up. When she sings, Now that I know what I'm without, you can't just leave me. It indicated that now that she's been seen, and that she has finally seen herself, this person is now very important to her. If I may be so bold, I wouldn't use the term open-mindedness. Rather, it's just about being seen after you've hidden the truth from everyone, including yourself. As for Fallen, it too was a smash. To date, it sold over 17 million copies worldwide. After Amy Lee and guitarist Ben Moody started the band in 1995 at the ages of 14 years old, all their work had paid off big time. Unfortunately, things were about to take some sharp turns. Because even before Evanescence would win their first Grammys, Ben Moody quit Evanescence in the middle of touring. The reason? Creative differences. Ben wanted to do more commercially viable stuff while Amy wanted to do her more symphonic sound. In an interview in 2006, years after Moody's departure, Lee said about Moody, I don't hate Ben, I just don't ever want to speak to him again. She said that they hadn't spoken since the night Evanescence won their two Grammys, meaning that they hadn't spoken since February 2004. In mid-2003, Amy Lee began dating see their frontman Sean Morgan. So there was a bit of an upside there. Seether re-released their song, Broken, from their album Disclaimer, but this new version featured Lee singing with Morgan and was placed on the Disclaimer 2 album. As much as Lee was against having a male vocalist in Evanescence, this song made me think twice about that. Their harmony was electric. Ben Moody was replaced by Terry Balsamo from Cold, and Evanescence released their live album, Anywhere But Home, in November 2004. They did a cover of Korn's Thoughtless, which a lot of people love, but it was kinda clunky to me. Now the intro is beautiful and chilling to the bone, but the piano with the guitars was a little jarring. When Amy and the band 
wrote their own stuff, they always worked together. It was a bit of a low point on an otherwise pretty good live album. Farther away, that song, that was my jam. I always said, why wasn't this on Fallen? But it was on Fallen, the Japanese edition. It was also the B-side to the Bring Me To Life single. The piano is minimal in the song, but it fits with the rest of the instrumentation perfectly, just as an Evanescence song should. In February 2005, after extensive touring and wind-up records begging for a new album, Amy Lee locked herself away and began writing material for the next project, as well as for the movie Chronicles of Narnia, which ended up being too dark and epic, but also to begin therapy. Of this time, she said, that's my favorite part. I go into this kind of weird, dark, obsessed with my own sadness funk. Of therapy specifically, she said, for the first, I don't know, lots of sessions, I just go in and cry every time. I guess I was letting out all the ghosts of my past. Apparently, Lee took about 10 months to write the material for The Open Door, Evanescence's sophomore album. But during that time, life happened. In July 2005, another member of the band left. This time, it was bassist Will Boyd, who wanted to spend less time on the road and more time with his family. He was replaced by Tim McCord from The Revolution Smile. A few months later, during the fall, Amy Lee and Sean Morgan broke up. When Broken dropped, I was one of those people who said, hey guys, you can't assume that just because they wrote this wicked ass ballad that they're together. So when I found out that they were actually together, I was pleasantly surprised and pretty disappointed. Weird combo of emotions. But Morgan had been struggling with substance abuse issues for some time and Lee had had enough. Much of their issues served as inspiration for the very material Lee was writing for The Open Door. In November 2005, Terry Balsamo suffered a thrombotic stroke when a blood clot in a neck artery entered his brain. He was out of commission for several months. And if things weren't bad enough, Evanescence fired their manager, Dennis Ryder, in the same month. Ryder had been with the band since 2002 and filed a lawsuit against Lee for breach of contract and wanted $10 million in damages. In December, Lee countered with a suit for breach of fiduciary duty, sexual assault and battery, professional negligence and currency conversion, among other claims. What are these other claims? Well, they're a doozy. It was alleged that Ryder, quote, neglected Lee's career and business and has focused his efforts on having extramarital affairs, hiding them from his wife, becoming intoxicated during business meetings, physically abusing women and boasting about it, making repeated unwelcome sexual advances toward Lee, receiving fees in excess of what was provided for in his management agreement and using Lee's corporate credit card to purchase gifts for his mistress. There's more. Ryder once ran his hand up uh, Lee's leg. On another occasion, she claimed he told her he, that, quote, he wanted to perform a gynecological examination on her, end quote. He also engaged in a conflict of interest by continuing to represent former Evanescence guitarist, Ben Moody. And Ryder's termination letter, included in the suit as an exhibit to the filing, reads, quote, As you are well aware, Miss Lee was recently in an abusive relationship with Ben Moody. She has no intention of associating with any persons who engage in that sort of abusive and illegal conduct. Okay, uh, what? What the fuck? At this point, Moody was writing songs for Avril Lavigne, Lindsay Lohan, and, and Anastasia. Just as Lee said, he had a thing for the commercially viable songs, so he went there. But given her strong boundaries against Moody, what did that letter mean when it said abusive relationship and, and illegal conduct? Ultimately, we don't know the extent of the abuse. We can only speculate. When Blender asked Lee about it, she didn't want to comment. As for Dennis Rido, he denied all allegations. 
So that wrapped up a pretty eventful 2005 for Amy and Evanescence. Fortunately, things started to get better. The Open Door was scheduled to be released in March 2006, but due to Balsamo's stroke, the date was pushed back. During this time, Amy got in touch with the secret inspiration for Bring Me to Life, the very song that catapulted her and her band to superstardom. She had a friend named Josh Hartzler, who initially was just a friend of a friend. Lee spoke to the Boston Phoenix about the song. I was inspired to write it when someone said something to me. I didn't know him and I thought he might be clairvoyant. I was in a relationship and I was completely unhappy. But I was hiding it. I was being completely abused and I was trying to cover it up. I wouldn't even admit it to myself. So then I had spoken maybe 10 or 15 words to this guy who was a friend of a friend. We were waiting for everyone else to show up and we went into a restaurant and got a table. And he looked at me and said, are you happy? And I felt my heart leap. And I was like, he totally knows what I'm thinking. And I lied. I said I was fine. So, as it turns out, Josh, who would become Amy's husband in May 2007, and the father to her child in July 2014, was the guy who saw into her eyes like open doors. Is it any wonder the sophomore album was called The Open Door? Okay, well, I don't think Josh breathed life into her like the song said, but I think he was the catalyst for change. It was Amy who got the help, and it was Amy who kicked most of the bad influences out of her life. She wrote the ballad good enough for Josh. It was the closing track on The Open Door. It commemorated that she had finally felt good enough in the eyes of someone and settled in a relationship. So finally, she spoke to Blendo saying, quote, when I first heard it, I was worried, like, this is corny. It doesn't fit our image. But you know what I'm realizing? Sometimes it's okay to have a happy ending. Thanks for watching.